Welcome back. It's your boy Fresh. And I'm Mary, and we are a co of nerds. So what game do we got to review this time? Look, it's invaders. Perhaps from space. Fire. Reminiscent of a certain Sp game. <laughs> space invaders. I don't <laughs> That's probably still trademarked. I'm not sure. Uh, it's been redone a lot of times. Yeah. So. That's true. <clears throat> So, Fire is, uh, it was designed by Friedman Fries. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm saying the name correctly or not. It's got to be German. Um, it's one to two players. There's a uh, solo mission that you can do or a cooperative group mission with the mm -hmm. two. And um, it's ages 10 and up. And the playtime is about 25 minutes per level. How many levels are there? Uh, there's nine levels, nine levels in the game. Um, so, basically, the... This is another travel game. Obviously, you can see how small the box is. If it's, you hold it in one hand. Um, it's in the theme of Space Invaders. So you are powering up your weapons with these battery cards. And once you get to a power that is equal to or exceeds the value of 10, the gun's going to go off. And then you take total battery power minus 10 times the number of targets in there and it'll make a little more sense once we're in components basically each battery has a little targeting so if it took you say five batteries to get to 10 energy or I guess that's bad example 12, 12 energy, energy yeah it would be a good then one then it would be 10. 12 minus 10 equals 2 2 times 5 equals 10 so it would shoot for uh, 10 power. Mm -hmm. um, so for for a travel game, there's a little more math to it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so you're always constantly remembering what cards you've played, what batteries you could have potentially in your hand. Basically each turn, you shuffle up your deck, you draw one battery and you play it on, in the cooperative game, one of two spaceships. In the solo game, you get three. Um, and depending on which level you're on as you start to level up or work um, on the different levels then they kind of throw in uh, different curveballs that you can like uh, little additions that you can do so one of the cards you trade out um, is normally worth four power a four power battery and um, you trade it out is it at level two if you play that four card three you might be level three or four you get plus five. Right, so if your gun goes off with the new four power battery, you do that same calculation and add five. There's another one, you know, it, it is a little spoilery, so I don't want to dive into too much of them. But um, basically, each level you go up, there's little tweaks to your battery supply or and villain supply. So uh, the game gets progressively harder. I did find this game. To be pretty tough for a oh. for a travel game. Yeah, a lot. Uh, it, it seemed so simple when we went to go play it the first time. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, this is this is easy. We'll we'll beat this really quick. Nope. No, no. <laughs> we got we got spanked several times. I mean, you yeah. you really have to plan out each battery. And in addition to that, you have to get lucky and not and have your batteries come out in the right order. Mm -hmm. so, you know, when you get your two or three big batteries up front, then you can't exceed 10 by a whole lot. Um, so you, you can kind of get yourself into trouble. I think that's why they got the two different ships. You can kind of split them up. But uh, sometimes if, you know, you kind of got to go with the flow with, with your batteries. Yeah, so just you, what you draw. Right. Oh, and then you have to discard. So anytime that your gun fires, you have to discard one of your batteries. So your hand gets smaller and smaller after each time that you fire. Right. Let me slightly clarify. So instead of discarding it, you remove it from the game. Yeah. Um, so that you never get to shuffle that back up. So it's permanently gone. So each time you shoot, essentially how you lose the game is you can no longer either fire your weapon or I guess that's I guess that's it, right? 
Okay, eventually you run out of firepower. Right, because you have to equal greater than 10, so eventually you dwindle your deck down enough that you can no longer reach 10. Mm -hmm. And that's how you lose the game. So, report card. Let's do a report card. So, story theme. <clears throat> there is no story. It's yeah. just, a, just a box of cards. And if we were saying that it was definitely based off of Space Invaders, I, it fits pretty well with the theme. You think so? Yeah, I mean, you have to charge up a battery and fire. And then, you know, as... as have you, you played Space Invaders? <laughs> <laughs> So there's not really that component <laughs> in Space Invaders. No, yeah, Space Invaders, you just spray as much bullets yeah, as, as you can. Um, fire it. I have played Space Invaders. Okay. Yeah, it, it really didn't fit that theme for me. Um, I guess it's it's not trying to be Space Invaders. I mean, the pictures kind of look like Space Invaders. Yeah. I mean, you can see it from the back of that box. It's clearly supposed to be Space Invaders, just in a, a card game. But this one, I, I thought this one was pretty tough to grade. Um, so I just went 5 out of 10. Mm -hmm. 1 being the worst, 10 being the best. I went 5 out of 10. So it didn't really feel like Space Invaders. It felt like a, a different game. Well, and which. Technically, it's right. like supposed to be. Right, it's supposed game. to be a, a different game, but they use a lot of the same artwork as Space Invaders, yeah. so it, it, yeah, it just, it was okay. It, it fit okay. What about you? I would do a three and a half. Three and a half. Yeah. I, I didn't necessarily feel like um, there was much, uh, you can't really feel the theme or story, obviously no story, but you can't feel the theme coming through when you play. Um, right. And, you know, I have a minor in math, but a game that is just a rerunning the same math problem kind of over and over again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can see that. I don't, I don't necessarily feel that's very thematic. <laughs> All right, what about gameplay? What did you think about the gameplay? Um, I did like how it does a, a little twist with each level that you mm -hmm. continue to go up. Um, it, it does something a little different because you're also going against bigger monsters, aliens. Yeah, bigger and more aliens. Yeah. So, um, I thought that was kind of cool how they did that and twisted it, you know, made it different. Mm -hmm. And it is... In my opinion, it's unique. I've never played a game like this before. Anything like this. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not exactly sure. It's not really a deck builder. No, it really it'd almost anything. like be the opposite of a deck builder because so, you're losing yeah, a cards. Deck <laughs> D builder. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it is, it is a unique gameplay style. At least not one that we've experienced. I'm sure. I'm sure there's probably is other games out there like that, but not only one that we've experienced. Yeah. I um I, I had a lot of fun playing the game. Um it is a, you know, like she said, a, a constant math problem where you're trying to you know, figure out, all right, I need my one to come out before my three so that way I can fire my gun for the biggest, and sometimes the three hits first, and you're just, oh no, you know. Yeah. It felt, um, every time I finished playing, I immediately went to play it again, to try mm -hmm. again, because there is that, I thought it was a really good balance between skill and luck. Mm -hmm. and if you're not just paying attention, you're just kind of throwing cards down, you're going to lose. Oh yeah. Um, so you really got to be thinking several batteries ahead. And like, okay, I need, I want to build this one up to nine and get my four. Oh, I drew a two. Well, let's put it over here. Oh, there's my four, you know, and it's, um, there's a, you can also hand batteries off to your partner, which, you have, um, yeah, per level you have two, two yeah, two handoffs. Mm -hmm. And, um, I think the first game we played, we didn't really do that. And I think, yeah, it, we suffered from it. Like, yeah. you need, you have to be able to do that. Yeah, even though you're going to get up, give up your big four battery, 
Well, you don't have like, to, but it really I, only I makes do. sense. I, you know, it really only makes sense to do it if you're gonna give up something big like that. Right, but if she's got a gun at power of nine, and I've got two at seven. I'm not going to really get a big shot with my four, but she will get a big shot. Then I'll go ahead and give her my four and then try to eventually get one of my guns up to nine and she can give it back to me. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I thought that was unique. That was fun. They keep the card. So I also thought that was, you know, I've seen deck builders where you can, here you can borrow this card, but you have to give it back. This one, you just give it to them. I thought that was really fun. Yeah, and they have it throughout the rest of the level. Mm hmm. I think for gameplay, I'm going to go a 9. I, I really enjoyed it. I, I had a lot of fun. Um, I'm going to go 7. I'm not quite as high. Um, uh, as fun as I found it and as much as I wanted to to play again because I felt challenged and I really wanted mm -hmm. to, to keep trying to win, um, I was also frustrated. <laughs> it was frustrating. It's frustrating, I think, the component of... Um, the randomness of what cards you're going to draw. I wish I had more power over that. And yeah. I suppose, you know, that also adds another, you know, level of complexity and challenge to it. But uh, I did find myself frustrated Yeah. quite a bit with this game. I do wonder if you could have, like, a, a hand of two cards, if that would kind of streamline it a little bit, make it a little bit easier. But uh, I, I enjoy tough games. I enjoy losing um, no, you don't. I enjoy losing when I finally win and then I can look back at all the losses and laugh in their face <laughs> because I have now conquered them. But I, I do I, I don't like cooperative games that we just roll through. Mm -hmm. And you know that. Yeah, yeah. You don't want to be able to just win every time. You don't you, you need to be challenged right. or else it's not fun. Right. And then the more losses you have when you do finally overcome and win you just get a greater sense of accomplishment and, uh, and victory <laughs> <laughs> all right uh components so this one doesn't have a board it's just a series of cards so i'm just going to kind of show the camera here so here are the two ships you get three in solo please yeah three in solo two in co-op and then here are the battery cards. As you can see, uh, here's the targeting arrow I was talking about. So you're going to add up these values, minus 10 multiplied by the number of targets. Now I'm just showing you sort of the, the base. So there's the three, there's the four, uh, two, one. Um, because I, I didn't want to spoil some of the, the more advanced stuff. That's the way if you choose to play it, you can be surprised like we were. Uh, here is a little tracker to pass a card. So basically once you oops, once you pass a card, you essentially rotate this once and then twice and then you know you've passed two cards and can no longer pass. Uh, before the start of each level, you'll see these, and they basically show you how to set up the aliens. So there's the first one, there's the second one. It gets pretty mean. I think we played all the way up to like a th was it two full levels, and the next one had a third level, so it just continues to get bigger and bigger. So here are the aliens. This has a similar mechanic as the pass a card. Where once you kill this animal at 12, it rotates. Now you need to shoot it at 9. Uh, let's just say it's at 9 and you got a 15 shot. You can shoot it twice by going 9, 6. And you get to flip it all the way, oops, all the way to 3. Um, and you can't separate your blast among different aliens, but you can keep shooting the same one. Or if, you know, they'll kind of stack on top of each other, you can shoot this one and the one behind it. Um, if this one, 
let's say this one was at 2 and you had 14 power you could shoot this one, kill it and then have the 12 carry over to the top one, hit it once and turn it um, these are the the aliens from the first two levels you can see they've got different toughness um, the art on it's pretty cool uh, and that's pretty much it for components yeah. um, so I guess we'll go ahead and get into the grades so this is component slash art um, I love the art on these it's reminiscent of the old Atari and arcade game Space Invaders which is uh, I think my old dentist office had one of those where you sit down and play Space Invaders on it was like a it was an arcade cabinet but it was like a table oh, really? it was an arcade machine and you had this little ball and you're rotating back and forth and shooting oh. <laughs> um, that's cool I spent way too much time as a dentist as a kid, but uh, <laughs> I did like that game. Um, what did you think of the art? Yeah, I mean, I, I like that it's reminiscent. Um, it's very basic, very simple. There's not a whole lot to it. I don't think that there had to had to be too much thought that went into the art for this. Right. It's, it's pretty straightforward. <clears throat> well, that doesn't mean it doesn't look good. It does look good. Um... So one thing about these, and I'm sure you can kind of see, uh, these cards are about half size regular playing cards. Yeah. Would you say? That kind of makes it a pain to shuffle. Yeah. I would have liked full size cards and not these little halfies. If you got big hands like me, it's impossible to ripple shuffle them. You're just that's tough um, also I'm, I'm not an expert on components um, but these cards seem to get sticky really fast yeah I'm not you know we keep our house decently clean we got kids but you normally know, wipe down the table before we play wash our hands and, you know wash our hands but these seem to get sticky really really fast and if you feel like this card that hasn't been touched and shuffled versus this card that has been touched and shuffled. Oh, that's uh, feel doesn't really translate via YouTube. <laughs> but um, this one just feels sticky, yeah, and greasy, and, and this one. I, is, I wonder is if it smooth. picks up uh, oils from your skin easier. <clears throat> it, it, it might. So maybe they didn't do some sort of coating. Yeah, coating or sealant or. Uh, maybe it's slightly cheaper card stock. I'm not entirely sure. It doesn't feel super flimsy. Maybe a little bit flimsier than a normal card. Uh, so what's your grade for components? Five. Five. I'm in the middle. Yeah, I really like the art, mm -hmm. but I, I wasn't crazy about that. So I think I think five five's good. I'm gonna stick to five as well. Yeah. Um, it, right. It's about as well as you can great it considering there really is not that many components with it anyway yeah it's yeah. just basically a deck of cards yeah and then the art well i liked it didn't set it apart or like a similar fables that one yeah. elevated the game because the art was so beautiful mm -hmm. this is cool and retro but it's not like the world on fire yeah with its art um so overall gray what do you give it i'm gonna give it a six Six. Mm -hmm. All right, I am at a seven, slightly higher than you, but uh, I did enjoy the game. I did enjoy the challenge. I love that um, you have to. It's a travel game that really makes you think. I mean, that yeah. one is. You know, when we, when we did, if you go back in the uh, archives, we did a the Simlo Fables review, and that one I felt like you could do that practically anywhere mm -hmm. you could do that in a you know table at a restaurant anywhere I don't feel like the, the travel aspect is as great with this one no you need a little bit of space in order to spread out all the um, the parts of your battery or the batteries that, right. that charge you and then 
you know, the, the Simlo, you could sort of, it had a grid pattern, but I felt like you could just hold those in your hand and accomplish the same mm -hmm. goal. Whereas this, the aliens have to be, you can only shoot front row aliens first before you can shoot the back row aliens. So they have to be laid out and displayed. So you kind of have way. to, yeah, and then they rotate and they take damage. Um, and then you kind of want to, you know, build your battery longitudinally. Yeah. <laughs> kind so of have it spread out so you see out. You don't want to accidentally have more than 10 and not fire it. Um, so I, I didn't think the portability was as great, but uh, it was still a fun, cooperative, tough game. It doesn't take long to set up. There's not tons of pieces. You can yeah. break it out. Just do one level at a time if you know you only got 20 minutes before bedtime. I think I think you can really enjoy it. Mm -hmm. So we put all of our games into three categories. Play, which means it'll hit the table quite frequently. Display, which means you like it, but it's probably going to sit on the shelf a little more. And stay away, I means leave that one at the store for someone else to get. Where do you have this rated? Display. Display. <laughs> again, we enjoyed it. Yeah. We will break it out again. We will still play it, but um, there are other games that I think that are more exciting and more fun mm -hmm. for us on our shelves. Yep. All right, that'll do it for this video. See you next time. Bye. Bye. -bye. Pew, 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 pew. Is that your space invaders? That's or? my space invaders. Pew, 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 pew. <laughs>what do you want to do after this video? Hot tub. <laughs> time machine? Hot tub time machine. <laughs> I'm better at the box than you. Okay.